President of the United States. Thank you. Oh, please. Thank you all, and please be seated. Welcome to the White House. It was in my 1987 State of the Union address, way one of the best parts of this job, is that from time to time you get to quote yourself. <laughs> but uh, it was in my State of the Union address that I said, let us remove a financial specter facing our older Americans the fear of an illness so expensive that it can result in having to make an intolerable choice between bankruptcy and death. Well, our administration, I went on to say, would soon submit legislation to help free the elderly from the fear of catastrophic illness. Well, that initiative has produced an historic piece of legislation. And in a moment, I will sign the Medicare Catastrophic Coverage Act of 1988. This legislation will help remove a terrible threat from the lives of elderly and disabled Americans, the threat of an illness requiring acute care, one so devastating that it could wipe out the savings of an entire lifetime. The scene is only too easy to picture. An elderly couple, perhaps, one has a very long stay in the hospital, the other forced to empty the savings account, to skimp on groceries, and even for those never actually forced into this situation, there's the worry, the fear that someday it might just happen. This legislation will change that, replacing work with peace of mind. I'm proud to be able to note that the legislation follows the same premise as all sound insurance programs. It will be paid for by those who are covered by its services. Even so, I must add a, add a word of caution. Every administration since the care program uncontrollable cost increases in our government health care programs. Whoever the president in office, program costs have exceeded the best congressional budget estimates. Unless we're careful, it's possible that aspects of this legislation will do the same. In particular, the legislation provides many new benefits, benefits like respite care and prescription drugs. Since these have never been covered by Medicare, we have no real way of knowing what these services will cost. So if future administrations and Congresses aren't diligent, these new benefits could contribute to a program we can't afford. This could be more than a budget problem. It could be a tragedy. The program, after all, is to be paid for by the elderly themselves. So we must control the costs of these new benefits, or we'll harm the very to help. And yet, if administered with prudence, this program can, as I said, provide countless Americans with peace of mind. Many people share the credit for this achievement. In fact, I feel a little like an Academy Award winner back in my old profession. No matter how many I thank, I'm afraid I'll leave somebody out. There were the hundreds who testified at the regional meetings. There was the public-private working group consisting of many of the nation's leading health experts. There were the senators and representatives of both parties, like Dan Rostenkowski, chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, Lloyd Benson, chairman of the Senate Finance Committee, John Dingell, chairman of the House Energy and Commerce Committee, Bill Gratison, Pete Stark, and many others, some of whom are on the dais with me today, who toiled, compromised, and sacrificed. There were the elderly and their organizations who agreed to pay for this new benefit rather than have it placed in the backs of their children. And there was our Secretary of Health and Human Services, Dr. Otis Bowen, working tirelessly to bring this achievement about. Now, on behalf of a grateful nation, I thank you all. And now, let me sign this historic legislation, the Medicare Catastrophic Coverage Act, of 1988.